Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and what we have for you today is our review of the Sony HTS 40R soundbar. This is a budget soundbar from Sony and it falls under the price point of less than 30,000 rupees. As of recording this video, it's priced at about 29,000 rupees. And the most important question is, should you buy it or not? Now, Sony has a lineup of a lot of budget soundbars. If you are looking for something in the sub 20K price point, you have the Sony HTS 20R. And of course, closer to the 30,000 rupees price point, we have seen the the Sony HT-RT3 which was which is a soundbar that we've really liked because it had pretty good performance for the price and it is a few years old but it still packs a punch I'm still using that soundbar and I think it's pretty good now we have the HTS 40R and looking at some of the specs on paper it looks like it's a replacement for the HT-RT3 and the most unique thing about the soundbar is the fact that it gets rid of the clutter of the wires that travel from the back satellite speakers all the way up to your television. That's not the case anymore because of the wireless amplifier that the soundbar comes with. So how does it perform? Well, let's get the build and design out of the way of these things. Now, in traditional Sony fashion, which we've seen with a lot of its 5.1 soundbar systems, you have the front, left, right and center channel. In the soundbar itself, there are no connectivity options in the soundbar itself. Everything is in the subwoofer and just to give you a perspective of the length of the soundbar, it will fit comfortably under a 43 inch TV length to length. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, it has this grill mesh up front which hides the drivers but the grill mesh unlike the S20R does not wrap around the soundbar which I think is nice it has this individualistic grill look it is really light as well uh, it is an entirely plastic shell but it does not feel cheap at all coming to the subwoofer the subwoofer of course like most Sony subwoofers we've seen in the past really does pack a punch but in this case it also houses all the connectivity options which based on your setup could be a pro or a con so I'm gonna let you decide that at the back of the sub uh, subwoofer you have the 3.5 mm port the optical port and the hdmi port we for the most part of this review used hdmi connectivity with a television in the front you have a usb port in case you want to play songs off a pen drive and it supports bluetooth as well and above the uh, subwoofer you have the controls Moving over to the rear satellite speakers, they are small and really light. And just for a positioning perspective, I would say you should place them at a little more than an arm's length facing you or a little more at an arm's length behind you, but then again facing you to get the best surround experience. And the cable that comes with the surround speakers is relatively long. And the good thing is that the surround speakers connect to this uh, wireless amplifier, which you need to connect to a power outlet. So even though they aren't physically connected to the main subwoofer unit like the S20, or the HDRT3 that we've seen in the past, you still need this wireless amplifier and a little bit of cable management, but you don't have the cables running down the line of your living room to the soundbar, which is really good and makes for a great clutter-free setup. Now, setting up the soundbar is also relatively simple. It's plug and play. We have a video uh, describing the unboxing and how to set up the soundbar. You can go back and check that out if you need to know how to set up. Now, coming to the performance. Now, let's understand one thing there are a lot of soundbars available in the market and we've tested quite a few of them but under the 30,000 rupee price point we have a lot of very good 2.1 soundbars the JBL bar is a great example of this but the 5.1 soundbars under 30,000 rupees the few that we've seen left us wanting more and that's the void that the Sony HD S40R kind of fills is because it's a really good sounding soundbar now to get a music perspective out of the way, one of my favorite soundbars for consuming music is the Yamaha YAS209, but that's a 2.1 soundbar priced at 35,000 rupees, which is five to 7,000 rupees more than this uh, Sony soundbar as of recording this video. Nonetheless, the music actually sounds really good. Now, if you listen to a lot of songs by, let's say, The Weeknd, uh, you know, it has a lot of dramatic effects in some of the songs and the surround speakers do a good job of enveloping you in that dramatic effect the uh, soundbar's music performance is quintessential Sony which means that it is slightly bass heavier like we've seen on Sony's Bluetooth speakers and some other products that Sony has in the audio space which may not necessarily be a bad thing for someone like me I reduce the bass using the remote control by a few notches just to get it where I like it. But if you're someone that likes extra thumpy bass, then you are gonna enjoy this soundbar. It has pretty good vocals as well. Remember, we are judging this from the perspective of 30,000 rupees and the fact that a soundbar does more than just, you know, give you music. You can watch movies, connect it for games, watch regular TV shows. So yes, while the audio file in you might still want to prefer a dedicated setup for music, even at the 30,000 rupee price point, this soundbar does a really good job of giving you 
you room filling sound and if you're having a party at home know that all the channels are at work giving you a pretty good experience when it comes to music now moving over to movies ready player one is a great example of course we can't show you that movie but what we're going to do is play a sound sample for you right now and of course some games as well which we recorded uh, from the sound bar just to give you a bit of an experience uh, you know it's copyright free content so have a listen Okay, so now coming to the movies, uh, we played Ready Player One, which like I said, is a great example of surround sound experience. And when the cars in the race at the 11 minute mark are whizzing all around, you can feel the channel shift from the left to the right to in front. The front sound bar's channel separation might be a little weak, and that's because the front, left, right and centre are really close to each other so you, you might get a good swish of a car moving on your side but that translation from the side to the front may feel a li little narrow and my easiest recommendation to get the best output out of the soundbar is place the speakers facing you from a little behind you, about 4 feet behind you should be good. I also bumped up the volume of or rather the uh, presence of the surround speakers to plus 6 using the settings which is the maximum you can get to on the soundbar and I think that really brought about their presence when it came for movies even in a movie like spider-man homecoming when spider-man swishes from uh, the screen you do get this surround effect all around you which is really nice the vocals are also really clean unfortunately you can't manually increase the volume of the center channel of the soundbar only to get better volumes and there is a voice mode on the remote control that you can press to get better vocals but that helps in reducing the other sounds which may not be the best experience for movies so these are a few things to keep in mind Again, when it comes to gaming, we played a bunch of games and Dirt 5 is another good example because you have all the cars punching around you in a race and you can actually feel a car overtaking you from the left to the right thanks to the surround speakers. Even in Ghost of Tsushima, when an archer is shooting at you, you do get the call out from the archer from the left or the right if the archer is behind you. So it does give a good surround sound experience. Just remember to keep the surround speakers relatively close, about four feet of four, about four to five feet in my opinion should be the best distance not beyond that because then you're going to start losing the surround effect but yes if you want a really good punchy soundbar to increase the overall performance of your tv or your entertainment experience on a budget of 30,000 rupees then you can definitely consider this bar if there were any cons that i had to talk about the soundbar one would be the fact that for my kind of a setup, the fact that the subwoofer is the point of contact for all your inputs is a bit of a bummer, especially from a cable management perspective. But like I said, if it works for your needs, then it may not necessarily be a con. And the other problem is that the display, though efficient in letting you change the settings, does feel a little small and, you know, it may not be the settings that you change all the time but it's still the fact that the display is a bit cumbersome to use unlike the sony htz9f which is sony's flagship soundbar where the soundbar actually uses the television display when connected via arc to give you all the settings options that's not the case out here then again this is a budget soundbar so those would be the two cons for me but yes if you're looking for a surround sound experience where you are getting rid of a little bit of the clutter that you get with a soundbar then you can definitely consider this one i would suggest that you can keep the 
auto option on the remote control on speaking of the remote control it is the same one we got with the s20r you can go back and check out our review of that one it's plain it's simple it's got clicky rubbery remote controls and it works really well it's got the sound presets and the input on top so it's easy to use with the sound presets on the remote control, I found that leaving it on auto does a good job. I did change the presets when consuming different types of content, but on auto, it kind of picked up the content more than the type. So when I was watching a movie uh, and I switched the movie preset between auto, it was actually the same preset, but when I was playing music, the auto and the music preset had kind of a different sound to it. So I'm guessing it was judging the content more than the source, if that makes any sense. But yes, the auto profile of the soundbar works really well for the content you're consuming. So there you have it guys, that was our review of the Sony HT S40R. We think it's a pretty good soundbar, especially under 30,000 rupees if you are someone that's looking for a 5.1 setup. As always, you can let us know what you thought of this video in the comment section below. And for more from the world of technology, you can subscribe to the channel. We will catch you in another video. It's goodbye for now.